Welcome to the February 2020 Ultrasound Case of the Month. For any new viewers, the series highlights ultrasound for its contribution impacting patient care. My name is Greg Zahn, and please email me with any questions or concerns at gzahn at iu.edu. This case was seen by the resident, Dr. Casey McKay, with assistance provided by the supervising faculty, Dr. Ann Whitehead and Dr. Rachel Day. The team was alerted to a pending arrival by medic of an elderly male in moderate distress with unstable vital signs. Medic had called ahead to inform the team that the patient's blood pressure was running in the 60s. Upon arrival, the patient was in mild distress and could not provide a detailed history. Paperwork from his nursing facility did document multiple medical comorbidities. The patient was able to provide that left chest pain and swelling started shortly before medic was called. He additionally reported a vague history of a blood vessel surgery one to two months ago. The patient was immediately hooked up to the monitor, which confirmed the reported hypotension by medic. On exam, the patient was clearly in pain, and his left chest showed massive swelling from just below the clavicle that extended to the nipple. This finding was impressive enough to be noted by the medic crew. They had even considered needle decompressing his chest given his unstable vital signs and their inability to hear interior lung sounds on that side. As we will soon see, the medics made the right call by not needle decompressing the chest. Ultrasound was obtained given the odd presentation of a patient with unstable vital signs. This clip is the first image obtained by Dr. McKay. The video was obtained by utilizing the linear probe. This probe is often utilized for superficial structures because it's a high frequency probe that gives high resolution images. The top part of the image clearly shows normal soft tissue, representing normal skin, subcutaneous tissue, and muscle. The striations of the muscle are quite evident. Just inferior to the muscle layer is a mixed echogenic collection with a swirling appearance. The high frequency quality of the linear probe leads to great superficial image capture, yet high frequency sound waves cannot penetrate to image deeper structures. Thus, the physician switched to a phase array probe to analyze deeper in the chest wall. In this clip, we can clearly see flow into large mixed echogenicity collection. While it's obvious in this case, even without it, flow could have been better depicted at bedside by utilizing color or Doppler settings on your machine. Given the ultrasound imaging, the decision was made to switch from crystalloid resuscitation to resuscitation with blood products. Given the reported history of a blood vessel surgery, there was concern for hematoma with ongoing blood loss into the chest wall. A vascular was emergently paged and soon arrived at bedside. By the time Vasco arrived, the patient had received three units of PAC cells and his blood pressure had improved to 109 over 52. Vasco surgery agreed that the patient required operative management, yet with his improvement in blood pressure, they decided to obtain a CTA to better clarify the etiology of a suspected hematoma. This is a representative cross-sectional cut from his CT. We can clearly see massive swelling over the left chest from his hematoma. Here's a coronal cut from his CT as well. His CT was read as a large left chest hematoma with active extravasation from suspected connection of the left axillary femoral bypass graft. Given the smooth appearance, they suspected rupture of graft material or pseudoaneurysm. The patient was taken emergently for vascular repair. In the OR, they found a left axillary pseudoaneurysm rupture. He required aggressive resuscitation in the OR with 12 units of PAC cells, 6 units of FFP, and a 2-pack of platelets. Even with this, his case was complicated by interoperative hypotension down to a blood pressure of 40 over 20. He ultimately arrived in the ICU in low-dose norepinephrine and was able to be extubated on post-op day 1. Ultimately, the patient was discharged at baseline level health on post-op day number 6. I really have to commend the physicians who took care of this incredibly sick patient. Even with my ultrasound focus, I am not someone who ultrasounds every patient. I use ultrasound as a tool to help me at bedside, and I think this case perfectly exemplifies how ultrasound helped clarify a somewhat unclear presentation. Blood products were started rapidly, and the patient was able to be consulted with the appropriate urgency to the correct team that could intervene. There was confidence in his diagnosis rather than just a suspicion of the underlying pathology. These types of interventions and decisions are what save lives and express why I want to farther alter education, given its ability to help the physician at bedside. Thank you for watching the February case. Please email me with any questions or concerns.